Now strap yourself in because we're set up, switched on, and ready to go. You are watching and listening to Chris and Lester Till I Die TV on YouTube and your favorite podcasts. Welcome along, how the devil are we all? I hope you are well. I've got to be honest with you, I've just filled my pants because about two seconds before we go live, my guest disappeared off my screen. So it made me fill my pants, but he's back, thankfully. Um, welcome along, it is Letter Till I Die TV. If you are on YouTube, please do what it says there, which is subscribe. One would be so very, very grateful. And if you can smash those likes, please do. It does help with the algorithms as well. And if you are listening to this on Catch Up, on your favourite podcast platform, thank you for lending me your ears. Um, this is the second in three that I've, uh, sorry, the third in three that I've done. It's the last one, and I. When you look at Leicester last season, you could say we really did have a disappointing season, and it gives me no pleasure whatsoever. No, that's a lie. Actually, it gives me a lot of pleasure to talk to other teams that have also had a bad season last year. We talked to Rodri Giggs, you may remember uh, last week about Man United, and well, this team, I think they, 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 I think the word "skin of your teeth" will spring to mind when we mention them. It is Everton, and it's for the end of the channel. You've seen him on here before, and I said they'd like to have him back on. And good evening, Elton Wellsby. How are you, sir? Okay, Chris. Uh, probably like everybody in the country, rather hot and sweaty. Just a little bit, just a little mm-hmm. bit. I've got, I've got a fan there and a fan there, but they're, they're keeping quiet. So, but thank you for coming, guys. Uh, <laughs> an old joke, but I'm an old man. You, know? ah, you disappeared then. You, you, you made me, uh, <laughs> you made me panic a little bit. No, I, I, I just touched the phone for some reason, I slightly adjusted it, and everything went off. <laughs> so um, yeah. I yeah. put it right back where it was originally, uh, and it seems to be working fine now. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, James says good evening. Um, an Everton fan there. Uh, good. Hi, James. Of, also an Everton fan. Um, good man. We need all well. <laughs> when it comes to the to a fan base, we are the number one. Uh, and yeah. I I, I you, say that. Got, yeah. No, you have, and, and you know, I think when we came to Everton at the back end of last season, you know, we we saw that. You know, you, your fans are are oh. fantastic. Oh, the fans, the fans are the main reason that we stayed up. Yeah, well, we're going to come on to that because you know, last season you started the season, and you must have felt that this could have been a good season for you. I didn't. Oh, you didn't, right? Okay. Well, we got off to we got off to sort of, if you like, a reasonable start, not too bad, put it that yeah. way. And then the cancer of Rafa Benitez slowly began to sort of materialise, and he was he was very very divisive, and most of the the, the players did not relate to him. Right. And so, come Christmas time. Uh, it had reached absolute rock bottom, and he had to go. He just had to go. As I say, it was a cancer within our club. I mean, and then obviously Frank was appointed. Great appointment. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think he realised what a difficult job he had, mm-hmm. and, and how many 
wounds he had to heal. Um, it wasn't a case of kicking players up the arse when he was there. It was it was an arm around the shoulder. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then so, and then he bought into Everton because he recognised the fan base was unique, mm. and it was a combination of Frank, some of the players, and the fan base that eventually uh, got us over the line, as they say. Uh, and, not good enough. Well, let's have a look at the you know, the appointment of Rafa Benitez because you know he, oh, he, no. he'd been a good manager at Liverpool, and I know that's a sore point, but he'd, he'd also done a reasonable job with what he had at, at Newcastle. I thought, as an outsider, and obviously we, we, we look at these things as an outsider, that he, it was a good appointment. But was it sort of... Was the Listen, Liverpool... no, no, it was never a popular appointment. No. But I tell you, every Evertonian to a man would and lady would have said, well, OK, it's happened. We're going to back him, get behind yeah. him. Yeah. Uh, because of... He's the Everton manager, for God's sake. The, yes. the fan base yeah. can't turn against the manager for no reason. Yeah, yeah. So of course he was given he was given the license to thrill. <laughs> Need and I complete it? And as, as well. And it, it was it was all the football was wasn't well it wasn't football. Uh, it it was just it was yeah. just pathetic. It was it was awful. I mean, what? Did and you... I think I I twigged it. I did an interview with the Echo at November time. Mm. Uh, I remember. I remember one of the lines was, um, "I said, you know, I, I will give Rafa my full support, and hope he does well." I said, "I said that at the time. I cannot say that now. He needs to go." The time yeah. that was November, and it wasn't until January that he went. Do you think? I mean, what was the was was the the trouble that well we didn't know you were in trouble at the time very very similar to Man United sort of you know when Fergie left he left with a championship winning team but it soon went downhill when when he came in I mean certainly from a fan base like you say there was the Liverpool link and that was always going to uh, uh, I suppose Ryle and I understand that but what do you think went wrong because like I say you had had a good management career and on paper. It looked like a good appointment. Listen, Rafa Benitez with Valencia won two La Ligas in three years. Now, that's with mm. Valencia. Now, that is remarkable to beat yeah. uh, Real Madrid and Barcelona twice in three years for the title. That, that is unprecedented over there. Um, and yes, the job he did at Liverpool uh, with, with tremendous resources was a good one. It wasn't fantastic. Okay, they, they won the European Cup in that time, but it wasn't altogether fantastic. Um, at Newcastle, now that's what I, I was saying to Evertonians when he was appointed. I said, don't look at the rapper who was at Liverpool or at Valencia, although on his yeah. CV, fantastic. Look at the rapper who, okay, they went down at Newcastle under his stewardship, but also they came straight back up and he was in a, a, a terrible situation with the owner, Mike Ashley, mm. um, where he was they were buying on a shoestring. Um, he was having to play survival football. But he did. He was They idolised him up there, you know. Yeah. Rapper in, in Newcastle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they, if, if Eddie Howe were to, to leave now, who's become very popular in his own right, mm. but if Eddie Howe were to leave now for whatever reason, and they brought Rafa in, the, the Newcastle fans would be fine. But at Everton, he rubbed players up the wrong way. And our players, a lot of them are mentally fragile. I see, we, we do not, in the team uh, leading up to sort of the Christmas New Year period, we didn't have a leader on the pitch. Seamus Coleman was our captain, but he's not a leader in that in that way, in that respect, you know, when you think of natural lead, you think of Roy Keane, th those sort of players. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, Seamus is not that. He's a wonderful servant to Everton football, marvellous, but not a leader in that way. And we didn't have one. And I'll say the, the I would just say the mentality of our players was very fragile. And 
with a manager who was divisive, I'll, I'll use the word again, it yeah. just wasn't, it just was not happening. It, it was embarrassing to be truthful. Evertonians really felt embarrassment of what was going on. And do you think uh, managers, and I, I've said this a bit <clears> about <throat> Jose Mourinho, and he keeps proving me wrong, that some, that they have, they literally have a sell by date. You know, they have a period and what they do, you know, works, they're, they're good. But after a while, yeah. the way they, you know, Alex, you know, Alex Ferguson probably couldn't go in, couldn't get away now we're going into a dressing room and throwing tea about, you know, because we're living in a different well, world. Well, excuse me, he would. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes. seriously. Yeah. You can't change him. You couldn't change Fergie. And, oh, uh, no, no, no. I but what I'm saying is to. the players, that, you know, that he, he's now dealing with probably wouldn't, wouldn't take it. Uh, no, I, they'd have to. It, it, it's a it's a, it's a strange phenomenon. A Fergie, and you go back to say a Shankly, a Clough, mm. a Jock Steen type. Yeah. They, they had so much charisma and okay, not so much physical power, but enormous uh, power in their willpower. You know, mm. and it, it was very intimidating to players when, when they sort of went off off the rails, uh, probably for a good reason. You know, mm. off, off the rails and. I, I still think if if you have those those types today, the reaction of the players would be exactly the same. No. Um, I'm trying to think of um, any manager now who who could possibly uh, be like that. Feared is a is a kind yeah. of word which yeah. applies. Yeah, I would think Mourinho. Yeah. Um, I can't see Guardiola doing that somehow. No. Um, but then you think of all the other the top managers at the so-called top six: you know, Conte, Tuchel, what Guardiola we've mentioned, don't know about Ten Hag. You can't imagine them having that kind of attitude towards their players. No, no. Uh, say good evening to Spencer. He's joined us, and good evening to Dan from Turf Morehouse. Who says look after Tarkovsky. Uh, we'll come on to him a bit later. James says here, um, we've lacked leaders since Phil Neville, Tim Cahill, Mikel Arteta and several others. Would would you agree with that? What do you say? So we've lacked oh, leaders. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm, yeah. so, I'm, yeah. seeing, I'm reading that. Absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What we think, uh, you've, it's been mentioned a couple of times, and we've not discussed him. We have one in Tarkovsky, thank heavens. He obviously is a leader mm. um, An organiser of the back four I, I think with Tarkovsky there I am pretty sure that his partner Will not be Holgate Will not be Godfrey Obviously Branthwaite's gone to PSV on loan I think his partner is the one That he played with at Burnley And that's Michael Keane They, yeah. seem, they came on in a, a, I watched the pre-season friendly um, the other night, Saturday night, I think, yeah, Saturday night, uh, where they played Arsenal in, in Baltimore. I think it was Baltimore. I get confused with these places. Anyway, uh, first half, we, we were awful. It, it, was, it was just like it was last season before the fans took over and Frank bought into that. It was shocking. And then second half, we brought on a load of kids who really, three or four of them, looked like they could you know, that they could fit in or they could play in our opening fixture against Chelsea. But yeah. most notably, it was Tarkovsky and Keane came on the back four. Now, Tarkovsky, you could straight away, was pointing and, right, mm. do this, do that, you know? And it, he just took to it like a duck to water. Yes, yeah. And so I think, speaking on behalf of many Evertonians, we, we were impressed with him. Mm. And, and, and thank God, because... Boy, we lacked somebody like that last yeah, season. Well, we had Yerry Mina. He was a bit of a leader, a boss when he played. Mm -hmm. But he had such a bad injury record, you, you couldn't rely on him playing week in, week out. Yes, yes. Well, don't, yeah, I mean, I don't want to talk about Tchaikovsky too much because we wanted him. It was <laughs> we wanted him when he was thirty million. When he was three, we, we we didn't want him. But I think he wanted to stay in the northwest, though, and that was the big. The, and obviously, Lampard. yeah, I can understand that. I can understand that. And I, I mean, he's, that, he's, 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 only, he's 29. I mean, that, you know, yeah, Slatan yeah. um, Ibrahimovic. Uh, did I say that right? Ibrahimovic, yeah. um, he's yeah. just signed a new contract. He's injured, he's out with the cruciate. 
He's 40 years of age and he's just signed a new one-year contract with AC Milan. So, yeah. I mean, Tarkovsky's a spring chicken by comparison. In true. To him. In true. But, hey, again, if we go back to last season, looking at you, looking at the squad you've had, it was a it was a good squad. You know, it was a squad that, I could say, when you look at it on paper, shouldn't have been one that was fighting relegation. Ah. Uh. Or would you not? Would you not? I mean, to me, anyway. no, no. We, I mean, when you have a midfield that can't pass the ball, you are in trouble. Mm. When you have a back four without a natural leader in that back four, you're in trouble. When your centre forward is is injured for, for ages, and also apparently, obviously, very sorry about that, that he had yeah. sort of some mental issues. You know, you're three things vital components in the efficiency of a football team weren't were lacking i mean mm. people I've, I've saw it i read somewhere in one of the articles surrounding uh richarlison going to tottenham that he was the guy that kept up everton single-handedly An absolute balderdash because he scored <laughs> a few goals i mean it's not that if if you're looking at one player that prevented everton going down it would be jordan pickford yeah, and if you're looking for an outfield player um, to, to fall into a similar category, you would say Alex Awobi, who mm. 12 months, 18 months ago, was was laughed at as an Evertonian. But he 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 couldn't stand Benitez, <laughs> but and Frank, he he got he got to him. In a, in a way that brought the best out of Iwobi. He is now outfield, one of the first names on our team sheet. Mm. Really? Alex Iwobi. But looking at, looking at the players that you brought in at the start of the season, it was a, it was a mixed bunch, wasn't it? I mean, you got... A, Why are we a, a, talking about Rafa's era? It's gone. <laughs> I, don't want to talk it about, I don't want to talk about Rafa <laughs> and what he did. It's over. It's done. It's finito. Look to the future. It's making me feel better if I'm talking about Rafa. <laughs> oh, let's, what was no, say serious, was? Chris. I'll, I'll talk. I'll talk about whatever you want. But I think we've talked about Rafa. I don't want to talk about him anymore. No, and that is fair enough. That is fair enough. We'll talk Frank then. Let's talk Frank. Absolutely. When Frank came in, uh, I think I think you were. 16th and when you finished the season you were still 16th but had he not come in I know a lot of people say well he's, you know he didn't improve the squad but had he not come in that 16th would have been an 18th or a 19th yes I I, I if Benitez <laughs> sorry but if Benitez I know, say, that, what's that word no we'll no this is, word from now on this is the, the last the last time I even mentioned his name if Benitez yeah. hadn't been sacked we would have been relegated mm. unequivocally. Now, so Frank's responsibility and Frank succeeded in keeping us in the Premier League. But the main ingredient in, in all of that were, were the fans who rallied, who got together, who saw the team off when they, when they were playing away from home, mm. who greeted them in, in, in a way that uh, unprecedented. Is probably the, the way of putting it with with the blue flares, which everyone's, yeah. you know, this massive welcome when they when they arrived at Goodison Park for a home game. I mean, it was absolutely unbelievable. Players like, and I mentioned it a few moments ago, Alex Awobi was taking videos on his phone. Couldn't believe it. Mm. You know, they don't do this in London. You know? <laughs> oh, it was absolutely, bad. and that inspired the players. It certainly inspired Frank. I'm sure part of his uh, his pre-match team talk would be along the lines of, "Hey, you're doing it for them." Yes, yeah, and quite rightly so. You and you didn't need Delia Smith to get the crowd going either, did oh, you? Oh no, no. <laughs> Let's be having you. No, we exactly. didn't. We didn't need that. We we didn't need that. It's, as Evertonians, I mean, as Evertonians, we 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 really believe it's our club. Mm. You know that that Mashiri, um, and not so much Ken Wright, but Mashiri, he's he's only there part time. He's, he's he's not there for you know. It's yeah. our club. Yeah, 
and I'm looking for sort of March onwards, which is Frank's era. And yeah. the difference, I mean, you, you only lost five games from mid-March onwards. You hadn't, I don't think you'd won away or only won one away game until you came to Leicester and we, we I, felt, felt I, sorry I, for I, you and let you win. I think that was, was that our first away win since August or, so, or September, something like that, wasn't it? I haven't got the stats off the top of my head. Well, August, but... you, yeah, Brighton. It was your third game of the season. Well, there <laughs> you go. Look at Leicester. Yeah. yeah. But we, you see, one of our problems, um, I can't recall whether when we came to your place and won, um, whether Delft was playing. He made a huge difference. He's gone now. Uh, but mm. what he did um, in the, the games that he played after Frank took over, was invaluable because it gave us the chance to play some kind of possession football. We didn't have a number six of any description. We actually had the second lowest possession rate in the Premier League last season. I don't know whether you knew that, which means that either two out of three, Norwich, Burnley uh, and Watford, had better possession stats than we did. Two out of those three. Mm. That is pretty damning. Yes. I'm yes. sure you'll agree. Oh, yes. But although we, when we won the Premier League, we won it with the lowest possession ever. Oh, no, ever. it doesn't matter. <laughs> you won the Premier <laughs> League. Get it in. Come on, allow me, allow me my moment. Oh, you? no, no. You win the Premier League. You, you can't start uh, bitching <laughs> about the way you did it. No, I'm no, not. I'm just saying we, we did it with the lowest. I'm certainly not whinging. Certainly not whinging. We've got a, there's a campaign, uh, um, a, a group of fans, they call themselves the 27 campaign, and that's 27 years since we, we, we won a trophy, the FA Cup in 95. Yeah. You've won the Premier League and the FA Cup in recent memory. A lot of our fans can't even remember us lifting the FA Cup in 95. Yes. I, you know, I, I think the way Leicester are run, I think it's absolutely fantastic. I wish we had your owner and, and board of directors. I really do. Well, I know you feel that they're, they're not supporting Brendan Rodgers at the moment. And maybe there is something in that which is maybe a little bit sinister. I don't know. I genuinely don't know. But if Brendan is looking um, to strengthen, if he, if indeed he wanted Tarkovsky, um, there was no, there was no talk of, there was no talk actually of Tarkovsky going anywhere else other than Everton. No, no. In fairness, there wasn't. And I mean, the, the lack of money, because like you say, you've made one signing that's a free. We haven't made any signings at all. No, that, yeah. Certainly for us, I mean, I think you know, we've got to sell. I mean, you know, we, we've our owners. They're not poor by any stretch of the imagination, but. You know, it's a business and they've got to balance the books. You don't want to end up being a Leeds United and, and risking everything. Um, and they just haven't got the money because they've been hit by COVID because they're in the, in the tourism business. Yeah. And, well, you know, it's, it's you know. understandable then, isn't it? I wouldn't be, I, I wouldn't um, be throwing stones at their coach. No, no. Oh, certainly not. Oh, hell I mean, you know, we, we, we love them to bits, love them to bits. Yeah, not probably more than you love Mashiri. Oh, without without a doubt. I mean, <laughs> Mashiri's problem. He's put a lot of money in over six hundred million quid, and he's financing. Listen, I don't have um, a degree in business studies or anything like that, so I, this is an area I don't fully understand. But he is committed to our new stadium at Bramley Moor. In transfer fees, it's like half a billion quid. Mashiri's problem is that he is listening to the wrong people. And I'm afraid board of directors, although I loathe to say it about Bill Kenwright, because he's a friend and has been for many, many years, that the board of directors at Everton just aren't good enough. I mean, you've got Bill Kenwright, obviously, on the board there. He kept Everton going for many, many, many years. Um, yeah, it, it's, well it's the, the departure really of, of David Moyes and oh, Bill I Kenwright's have... chairmanship has slowly gone downhill mm. since Moyes left. Basically, he and Moyes had a tremendous relationship. Froze for a minute. There. Um, I was going to say we all know him sort of from the uh, Moyes era, and they did um, some well. They did some great business. I mean, the chap who was on before mentioning Tim Cahill. You know, some of the people that they brought in 
um, at that time, you know, made for an entertaining Everton side without, you know, without spending a hundred million on Jack Grealish or, or whoever, you know, um, the way City have done. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's it, yeah, but, but I don't know. I think Bill's sort of taken his eye off the ball, and, and mm. you know, after Moisey left, he thought he'd got a good name, Martinez. We all thought he had a good name, Martinez, but then. He, he, he didn't know how to defend, <laughs> you, know, you know. And then Kuman, God, love to say, talk about well, the way Frank has bought into being Everton manager uh, and being an Evertonian. Kuman never did that. No, we no. might have been hasty in sacking Marco Silva when you you look at um, the way he got Fulham promotion last season. T tremendous, what it by a country mile. Uh, and of course, Big Sam. Nobody likes Big Sam as an Evertonian. I actually do, only because he was asked to keep us in the Premier League, and he did that. The problem. The problem was once we were safe, we played survival football when we'd survived. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and it's, Dan, it wasn't. It wasn't good on the eye. No. Well, no. <laughs> but Dan says but there. He, he did. He did. He did what what he was brought in to do. You keep breaking up, Elton. No, I'm saying here, Sam did what, what he was brought in to do, and yeah. that was to keep us in the Premier League. Yeah. Dan says there, would you say Mashiri is like the Premier League's version of Mel Morris? <laughs> yeah, a bit tongue in cheek yeah. there, I think. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I get yeah. that. No, I, 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 Mashiri's problem um, is he's been listening to the wrong people. I mean, all right, I'm afraid I'm going to have to mention his name again here. When he appointed <laughs> Benitez, Bill Kenwright said, oh, don't do that. If you want to alienate the fans and make yourself unpopular, you go ahead and, and appoint Benitez. But seriously, don't do that. That is a mistake. Yeah. But he listened to his, uh, his mate, you know, um, because he's, he's, uh, not, he's not he's uh, not scared of dipping uh, his hand uh, in his sorry, and, and, then I, it was my fault. I brought the name up again. You did, you did. I Four don't, times. I don't want to talk. <laughs> but that that was an example. That was not to talk about um, the B. Uh, I, 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 I want to talk about that. It was to give you an example of yeah, I know. where Mashiri uh, listening to the wrong people. I'm I'm being facetious in a little bit of a way. I know, I know. Sorry. <laughs> but, um, um, but Mashiri, but Mashiri, he's not afraid to back the club. He will dip his hand in his pocket. But as yeah, you say, it's he, just he needs. Well, to have he doesn't go there. scouting and looking at players. You know, the the the, the director of football or, or the chairman mm. or whoever says, you know, or the manager, we want this player. Can you pay I Gilfie Sigurdsson? Can you pay forty odd million quid for him? Yeah, okay. I mean, that's fine. You know, he's, he's doing his job as, as as the owner, backing the manager and trying yeah. to get the best for Everton Football Club. The fact that, you know, we bought so many bad players is not his fault. That's yeah. the fault of the recruitment team. We've got a new um, director of football now called Keith Thelwell, who I believe is very well known in the Midlands, whose family... Uh, there's a, an Everton background in his family, so we're very hopeful that that um, you know he he turns out to be more successful than Marcel Brands, and before him Steve Walsh, who we got from a certain club in the middle. He was good when he was with us. <laughs> he well, yeah, apparently so. I mean, his claim to fame was um, oh, Morris. Vardy, Vardy, isn't that? Oh, wasn't Vardy, that what yeah. Well, Vardy, Mares, you know, <laughs> the list yeah, yeah. goes on. I think he, yeah. I think he used up all his good contacts when he was with us, unfortunately. <laughs> well, yeah, we, we inherited a guy without any good contacts. Or, or, <laughs> or, you know, um, I think he stopped, he stopped um, recruiting by the time he came to us. <laughs> <laughs> but he got Frank in, and I mean, yeah. I like Frank. I think he did a good job at Derby. He went to yes, Chelsea, and you could argue too soon. Chelsea's his club, and when you, when your club or whether England, if, uh, as an example, come along, you can't say no because you don't know if that chance will ever come round again. It's like Moyes Absolutely. going to, to Man United, you know. So 
he went to Chelsea. He did well in that first season. He got them into the Champions League, for God's sake, when he didn't even have money to buy any players. That's and right. I think, I think mm. there's a lot of people judge him unfairly. I think he's a good manager. I was a bit sort of unsure whether he was the manager to keep you up. Um, we all, we all good, wondered. You know. We all wondered mm. uh, because as a player and as a manager with Derby, um, you know, they narrowly missed out on, on yeah. promotion to the Premier League. Um, that obviously, with Chelsea, he really didn't have you know any worries at all in, in that respect when, yeah. when he took charge as a manager. And as a player, he's known nothing but glory. Mm. So we wondered, is this the guy to, um, you know, keep it in the Premier League? Uh, and yes, he did. But he had more help from the fans than he had from anybody else. Yeah, that is yeah. my opinion, which I know will be shared by any Evertonians who, who are listening to this um, broadcast. Yeah, and the man to take you forward, I sincerely hope so. Yeah. Um, if see, as you say, when we, we've only signed one player, free transfer from Burnley, but an excellent player in the, in uh, yeah. James Tarkovsky. Um, um, there are just, I mean, I was dreading you asking me, you know, who who do you think you might sign in this current window to, to make things better for the next season. I mean, well, I, I'm Leicester. We've made no signings. I can't make any judgment. Well, we, yeah, but you, you arguably don't need to make as many signings no. <clears throat> or as many effective signings as we do. Yeah. Because otherwise, we've got Tarkovsky apart. We're going to go into the season with the same bucket of shit mm. that got us into yeah. the trouble in the first place. But yeah. I'm sure that won't happen. I, but I don't think we'll be getting what you would call top quality signings. I don't think we'll be be doing that. I think they they will make us better than we were last season. Um, maybe halfway finished, twelfth, maybe tenth, something like yeah. that. But I mean, first and foremost, we need a number six, um, and we need another. I we need three players in midfield. Three new players in midfield. I, I'm mm. convinced. It's who can pass the ball. <laughs> who can pass it? None of ours can pass. Decore, the worst passer of the ball I've ever seen. Alan can't pass the ball. Yeah. Oh, God, you can't. You cannot. And you know, mm. Deli Alley played in the first half in, in the friendly against Arsenal on Saturday night. Poor old Deli Alley hardly got a kick. And there were people saying, "Oh, well, he's not trying. He's no good. We shouldn't have bought." He no one passed it to him. <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah, okay, well, go and get it yourself, Delhi. Yeah, it doesn't work it. like that. Yeah, you no. know, football's a team game, for Christ's sake. Yeah. But second half, oh, different. Not that Delhi was on the pitch second half, but in terms of yeah. the first half of our preseason friendly against Arsenal, in the first half, we didn't look like a team that had been coached at all. Second half, with kids, and the likes of Tarkovsky, Anthony Gordon, brilliant player, Michael Keane in there, Mikolenko left back. We look like a team that have been coached. Yes, yeah. I've got to ask you, um, and this was a surprise for me, how big a loss is Duncan Ferguson to the club moving on? I don't think it's a, it's a great loss to the fan base. Um, and to Everton Football Club, the institution, um, without a doubt. But I, I think Duncan is doing the right thing. I really do. He, he wants to be a manager. Now, at the moment, he's not going to be a manager of Everton. <clears throat> that would be his dream. That would be his dream job. Yeah. So he needs to go and cut his teeth, whether it's in Scotland <clears throat> or down the leagues um, here. You know, first division, second division, something like that, which would be very tough for him because he's only known, he's known big clubs, basically. He's, as a player, he, he's been at Rangers. Well, Dundee, wasn't it, to start with? But anyway, yeah. primarily Rangers, Everton, Newcastle and Everton again. Um, so I, I don't know his what his knowledge is of lower league football. I don't know. But, but I, I, I would, I think every Evertonian would say, thanks, Dunk, you know. Yeah. Uh, and good luck in the future. You you deserve to you deserve to be a success. 
And I am sure one day, in some capacity, he will be back at Everton. I'll tell you that. I mean, he's had lots of goes at, you know, being the standing manager. Well, no, he's done twice. He's not, no, he's not, it's not loads of goes. He's had two, two spells as caretaker. And the second one um, lasted very briefly. In between Benitez, <laughs> mention it again. In between Benitez and, and Lampard. Was it? Yeah. Is that many? Oh, You're five times now, yes. No. What, since I said I'd never mention him again? Exactly, yeah. So you told right. me off for mentioning him, and then since then you've mentioned him five now, times. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> his name has cropped up. We haven't talked about <laughs> okay. him. That's there good. is a difference. I, I mean, think. I know when um, <laughs> when Yeri came to Leicester, I think one of the key things that made it that him successful was that he still had the likes of Craig Shakespeare and you know, as a, as one of his assistant managers, yeah. And I'm just wondering if the loss of Ferguson will maybe damage Lampard. Sort of no, I don't know. no, we've we've got no because no, I, Duncan very much gone from the the front of the um, <clears throat> which he was under Ancelotti uh, on the uh, the front bench, you know, mm. uh, the front row of the uh, of the, the bench uh, to, to to the back row. We, we've got. Paul Clements, Joe Edwards, I think he's, don't know too much about him, actually. Ashley Cole, you know, we, Frank's yeah. got his own people there. And as much as he liked Duncan and enjoyed Duncan being there, from what we gather, um, you know, I and, and apparently um, Frank, when Duncan told him what he felt and what he wanted to do with the, the rest of his career, um, um, Frank asked him to stay, but I still don't believe Frank was sort of gutted that he he, he said no. I'm, I am going to leave. I am going to try and and find a way of getting into management properly. Yes. Um, yeah. No, I get that. I wouldn't even say that Duncan was a distraction because he wouldn't do anything to the deficit of Everton Football Club. No. Duncan would not. You know, no. we're we're in but, safe hands there. In terms of loyalty, we're in safe hands there. Everton so it, it's was. a case of good, good luck to him. Yeah. Now, looking at next season, so we're now, we'll, we'll move on, which you'll be happy about. Now, as I've said, and I like Everton, and I, I did a prediction show on another channel about two or three weeks ago, which was very early, and it's very difficult to do that because you don't know what signing clubs are going to make. So this was very much when I did this a, you know, a bit early. I'm not doing mine until the week before when we know sort of what signings we've got. Now I've got Everton finishing 16th, and that's not a, a, a you know a, a, a slight at you or anything like that because I like as a Lampard and I think he's the you know we, we will take you yeah. forward. But I just think yeah. next season is a season where you know it's you managed to stay stay above relegation. I don't think you'll be in a relegation fight. I think you'll be you'll find point wise. I just think it's very much a you know at least first full season. Let's just settle him in and, you know, let's not expect too much on that first season. But it's a case of will he be given the time? I mean, would you as a fan, if you did finish 16th, looking to move on, to go, yeah, you know, we're going in the right direction at least? Well, we're not going to know that for the, for the first sort of six or seven games of the season. And also, yeah. we don't know what our first 11 it's going to be. I mean, we kick off yeah. the new season against Chelsea at home, uh, where the atmosphere will just be incredible, unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, because whatever new players we have will be welcomed into the fold officially on that day. Yeah. Um, I say I'm just hoping that it's three new midfield players. Uh, there are rumours, although if, with it being Everton, transparency and Everton do not go together. <laughs> that uh, we might be we might be going for Maxwell Cornet uh, or Cornet. Yeah. I'm sure it's Cornet um, <laughs> uh, from Burnley. Another player from Burnley um, mm. uh, to replace Richarlison. Although personally, we have been linked with Emmanuel Dennis of Watford. If we could have raised the money for that, I'd have been quite pleased because he's a natural replacement for Richarlison. If you think about it, yeah. um, you know. More, most effective woman uh, uh, for Richarlison. I mean, Richarlison, great player. Uh, heard him to stay, I'm sure. Stay, but if if the 16th was June the 30th, uh, right. financially, it, it had to be. So 
um, who should be what our budget is going to be. No one knows, or they're not saying. Mm. I, I actually believe it. No one knows. Um, there'll be the select few. There's will be Denise, our CEO, Keith Thelwell, I'm for sure. Obviously, Ken Wright and Mashiri and Frank. But we don't know whether we, we uh, from the 60 million that we got from Richardson, are we able to go and say, well, right, 20 million for him, 20 million for him, and then maybe two lone players, um, and that will help to, to obviously pay their wages. There'll be a loan fee, et cetera. Yeah. I, just say we're playing with 60 million, we, we could probably achieve what we're, uh, you know, what we need to. Uh, to not make next yeah, season, no, no. you know, nail biting as as this last season was. So where? Um, but we, that's one guarantee. I, I can. The only thing I, I can guarantee you is that we will have by uh, by uh, well, I say by the end of the the window, we will have two loan players in because we can't splash a lot of cash. No. But two loan players, we are allowed, and I'm sure with Frank's connections, whether it be Chelsea, whoever, yeah. just Frank's connections, for God's sake, his uncle is Harry Redknapp, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, I'm sure Frank can come up with two really decent uh, loan loan signings, loan players. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, it's down to Mashiri to come up with the money for, for the other, for maybe two more that Frank would like. And let's let's hope uh, Mr. Mashiri is able to do that. Yeah. So, what for you? Um, I'm putting you on the spot here, but what for you would be acceptable next season? A minimum that you would want to see Everton achieve next season? Halfway. Yeah. Twelfth. Uh, Twelfth. Yeah. As long as as long as we're not in some kind of you know, relegation fight again. Because yeah. as fans, we do not deserve that. No. We do not deserve Doug says here, and you've just answered the question funny enough, but it just popped up, another season of struggle, or do you see improvement? Well, you've, oh, you've, I, see, you've... I see improvement. I mean, yeah. if, if we weren't to make any, even with Tarkovsky, that will be an improvement uh, yes. in, defensively. Yeah. I saw one or two kids the other night, a lad called Lewis Warrington, who was uh, on loan at Tranmere last season. He looked a real bright spark. Stanley Mills, Stan Mills, and Reese mm -hmm. Welsh. They're three kids who you wouldn't want to play them week in, week out. You couldn't. It wouldn't be fair on them. But there are three lads who who I could see um, uh, growing into the first team are really good. Mm. Um, so uh, we're, we're not totally without hope but it, you know you, yeah. you can't you bring kids through the academy and into the first team you do it gradually yeah and you don't play them week in week out mm -hmm. you know you you, <clears throat> you wean them yeah you know? and that's why we need experienced um players and I keep, I'm sure that people listening to this who've heard me on spaces and things like that but we need Two, two, maybe three midfielders who can mm. pass the ball. I, yeah. I'm sorry for repeating myself, but no, you know, it's, no. when you think about it, it's kind of important, isn't it? You know, the yeah, oh, midfielder yeah. can pass the ball. We got three yeah. who played a total of how many games? I couldn't tell you last season. Takore, Allen, mm. and Gomez can't pass it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, go <laughs> on. But I, 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 I think Doug actually preferred you to have had another season of struggle because he's a Liverpool fan, but <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's probably why. Um, and for Leicester, we'll finish on, on Leicester. I mean, we did. Well, I don't off. know. It's a. I know. I, I mean, as you say, you've made no signings. We've only made the one. Mm. Um, I mean, are you? I, I see Tielemann. Is what is he on the way out or? Yeah, that, that is that is the they say the million dollar question. Um, yeah, I think had had that happened last season when we finished, you, fifth, you, we'd won the community shield. Now, are you going to queuing up? I think um, probably the best. I mean, you look at some of the business. The business West Ham is doing now. Uh, yes. The business Tottenham have done and will continue to do. 
Nottingham Forest now <laughs> they virtually million. bought the team, yeah, and yeah. sixty million in, in in you know in signings, yeah. uh, cash signings, and I think maybe three or four more who are undisclosed, you mm -hmm. know, because we don't know. But they spent sixty million definitely now, sixty cash. That's it. They've yeah. done that, but it's more than that. That's that's only what's been disclosed. Oh yeah. Well, there are others that are not, you know, which haven't been disclosed. But I think they've got ten players in. Mm. Yeah, well, I, th I think I think for Leicester, like I say, so last very season. Difficult. Sorry, no, no. So last season, yes, it was a disappointment, but it wasn't a complete right. I mean, we re we reached the European semi final for God's sake. You know what I mean? Yeah, it wasn't that bad. We finished eighth, only one off Europe, but you know, success breeds expectations, and we'd had you know a couple of good good years success. Tielemans, I am getting bored with it. That's becoming the new Man United and Jordan Sancho saga. <laughs> He's supposed to be talking with Rogers this week. I don't think he thought, you know, I think he thought there'd be more clubs coming in for him. And maybe if it had been last season, my worry is he's going to go carry on, on his contract. Okay, um, so I was just plugging. I was just plugging in my battery. Yeah, oh, but no fine, no, fine, no, that's fine. Yeah, he's he's got a year left on his contract, and that's yeah. the worry. Uh, hopefully, though, he might. Maybe even if he just signs an extension, so that we don't lose him for nothing. But um, well, I, I, you see, I, I, I think you know, you've got some tremendous players. When we talked mm. <clears throat> prior to an Everton Leicester game last season, I forget it was the first or the second. Cause we played each other quite fairly close together, wasn't it? But yeah, I, I would yeah. say to you that, you know, seven or maybe eight of your players, seven of your players would, would get into our team. We were that bad at that time. I remember saying that to you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you know, know Madison. If we were with you on that one, then you went to say and beat us on the, on the next one. It would be interesting. I put this question out actually on, on, on my Twitter and Facebook. And I said, if we make no, no sign-ins, and we've accepted that, you know... We, we I'm might, sure you we will. I'm sure will. you will, Chris, yeah. because I, I tell yeah. you why. The, the loan market now is... It, yeah. It has to be, you know, implemented. Yes. And I, I have you got anyone on loan at the moment? I don't think you have, no, have you? No, we had Lockman, well, you, but he's gone back now. Yeah, but you yeah. you can... Same with Everton. You know, mm -hmm. there are two loan players you can you, you can have. And I would be amazed if, if you didn't... Uh, yeah. If, if you didn't pull that, so the loans are, are, are an option, but yeah, but I think uh, uh, the question that I was I was asking the fans was, well, if we end up with virtually the same squad that we finished last season with, when we didn't have all the injuries, we were putting four and five past teams again. So maybe it's yeah. you know not not the end of the world. No, of I thing, I, but, I wouldn't hmm. be at all surprised if you were challenging for one of the European places. Not the Champions League, obviously. No, 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 no. Uh, in fact, I'm not even sure how many uh, Europa League and the Europa Conference no. League. I'm losing track of this. You know, I, you I, think, I, be... I always appreciate the time that you give up to come on my show. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I know you've had a great day um, chewing the cud with an old mate today in your back garden. <laughs> uh, it was his back garden. <laughs> well, <laughs> and God, you you want to see the land he's got? Jesus Christ! Absolutely, <laughs> there's there's money in comedy, <laughs> obviously. Indeed, but, indeed there is. <laughs> indeed, but Elton, as a, always, a pleasure, and I always do appreciate the time because it is your personal time. That's fine, you Chris. No problem. Here, you know, I'm great. Thanks for Elton for coming on. Honestly, honest there about. Um, uh, at Everton last season. I'm glad he decided when he said to stop mentioning Benitez, he did. <laughs> five times. Five times. Um, uh, so, yeah, that's Man United, Leicester and Everton. The three teams that I think struggled last season. We are two weeks off. To Talking of women's Euros, we've got uh, Dan with us uh, at nine o'clock. And I'm not making any accusations there. <laughs> Don't think I am. I wouldn't do that. Uh, nine o'clock, join us. We'll be having a look back at the women's Euro so far. Good, bad, 
what have your thoughts been on it? Join us at nine o'clock and let us know. And that is with Dan, obviously from Turf Moor House TV. It will be a pleasure to have him on. And I thank you for watching. And if you've been listening, I thank you for lending me your ears. Like I said, right at the start, if you have got a minute, if you can do that for me there, that would be great. And smash those likes buttons. Uh, it does help with the old YouTube algorithm. So uh, I would appreciate that very much. And I will see you same, same channel, 9 o'clock. Thank you very much, guys. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you then. Goodbye. watching.